Hello. Today I want to share with you my golden rules in chess. This is so important because if you stay and watch the whole video probably you will be much better player. So first move should be e4. Why e4? Why not d4? Because when you play e4 uh, you will stick with basic ideas and that is to develop your king side first and then to castle. If you play first move d4 then it's more strategic position. You need to develop your queen side first. We will see maybe c4, knight c3, knight f3 and then you will see but uh, basically you are de developing first the queen side and this is totally opposite from uh, something logical and especially for beginners they should play some uh, logical moves so e4 is my recommendation for you okay after that we can say that uh, after you play e4 you need to uh, think how to take more center squares and to control the center because this is so important if you control the center uh, this is uh, something like uh, in the battle also so if you control the center you you can see the, the whole area there i mean what what is going on on uh, on the board so that is why it's, it's so important to take the center i mean you will put also the, the other pieces in the game and they will also control the center squares and after that you can see where you will go with your pieces. For example, now we have a bishop on g5 and we have some pressure on that knight on f6. So in some moment we can play knight d5 and to increase our attack on that knight. So uh, especially when black castle, now it's good time for us to play that and then we will open the king side. So there's some basic ideas, but uh, still it could be really useful for, for especially for beginners. But uh, even uh, bigger level should uh, stay and to watch the whole video because I have really 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 good things to show you okay so after that we can say that uh, it's uh, for beginners especially is so important to castle uh, in uh, first seven moves why because in this moment white can play knight g5 maybe because black plays something what is not important uh, in, for his develop here and that is why we can punish him with knight g5 here and uh, the pawn on f7 will fall so uh, if you castle then your rook will defend uh, f7 pawn this is so important because uh, in Italian game and uh, with uh, e4, e5 we can enter in Italian or uh, or Spanish opening. We will depends where is the bishop uh, is uh, on c4 or b5. But um, basically, what I want to tell you that after e5, uh, always uh, the pawn on f7 is uh, is weak. So, uh, for example, if you play something like uh, French defense, maybe then it's not weak because nobody can reach to f7 pawn. I mean, if after bishop c4 you can play simply d5 and we have completely different situation here but after e5 uh, in most uh, positions yes f7 pawn is wonderful so that is why i always recommend to uh, to beginners to castle in early stage of the game i mean probably uh, not to wait too long and one more rule is so important uh, especially for beginners so uh, always check the last move from your opponent so in this case uh, the last move was b b5 and now the our bishop is hanging so let's check what is uh, what is about b5 so he wants to capture our bishop so we need to move the bishop okay the, probably the best move is bishop b3 but after that uh, black can play a5 and still we need i mean after every single move from our opponent we need to uh, stop and to see first what is idea with that move so now after a5 there is a threat from black side so he wants to capture our bishop to uh, to take every single uh, square where our bishop can go so after a4 maybe we can move the bishop uh, for example maybe we will castle he will play a4 and after bishop d5 he can play c6 and our bishop will be in trap so we need to figure out before that what will uh, what could happen so in that way we will know how to respond so this uh, something what what uh, we can play here is a4 or maybe a3 still playable move could be c3 because after a4 we can move the bishop on c2 and now something from middle game. So when you enter middle in middle game and uh, if you earn already some material, probably the best thing what you can do is just to simplify position. So in this moment, uh, probably you need maybe if you uh, first look this position, maybe 10 or 15 seconds to see that white has one piece more. But if we uh, take a look this position, probably you, you need one second or two to notice that uh, white has one rook more. So what's the difference? When we have a lot of pieces on the board, 
then there is a lot of combinations what could happen. So still, this is not totally winning position for white because, of course, black can come up with some strong idea and uh, because of a lot of combinations, uh, your your chance to, uh, to blunder something or uh, for your opponent to create some good idea is, um, of course, high. But uh, when we enter in some end game with uh, one piece more, or in this case one rook more, then it's so easy for us to win the game because uh, black will stay only with the pawns and they can't do too much. Uh, so the basic idea should be here just to bring the rook on 7th rank and to, call, uh, to capture a couple of pawns and then we can just push the pawns to create a new queen here and uh, that will be game over after that. And now we have opportunity here to exchange our bishop for the knight, but this knight is uh, staying on the on the starting position. Black didn't develop him, and we don't need to exchange that. We already spent one tempo to develop our bishop, so why to exchange now? Maybe later, but uh, why to why to do that right now? So uh, in this case, uh, when we have uh, two pawn islands, uh, it's better to have the bishop because uh, he can go and to cover both sides at the same time, but the knight can't do that. So that is why it's better to have here a bishop. Now we, we can see here one uh, different position where our we have a knight and our knight is on the on the, in the center of the board and nobody can push back our knight so uh, the pawns already pass him and uh, the bishop is on different color of uh, our square where is our knight so he can't do anything so in this case it would be totally wrong to exchange uh, our good knight for his bad bishop so um, why uh, how we know that uh, this bishop is bad because most of his pawns are on dark squares so he should be on light square that will be much better bishop for him. So instead to exchange, we should try to come up with some idea how to um, help our knight in attacking. So we need to bring more pieces and to attack with uh, more pieces, of course. So in this case, maybe f4 would be a nice move just to open f file and then we will see. Probably we will bring more pieces on, on the king side because our knight can help us in attack. This is also one of examples where we can uh, see that uh, our bishop is better than the knight. So we have chance to exchange, but why to exchange? This knight is not doing anything good for uh, for black. Uh, on the other side, we have great bishop. Uh, he's hitting on the pawn on b7. That means that he's uh, also pinning the rook for that pawn. So black can't move the, the rook because of the pawn. Neither he can't move the, the, the pawn because then he will lose the pawn on a6. So pr practically he's so... Uh, pin because of our bishop and he's doing a really good job for us so we should keep him alive this is also one of examples where we can see that uh, we have a powerful bishop uh, especially because of uh, enemy pawn structure so every pawn is looking on the light square so naturally that means that uh, white doesn't need to fear uh, if we have a light square bishop but uh, we don't have him. So we have just a dark square bishop and of course we should base our ideas uh, through the dark squares. This knight is uh, practically without any chance to enter in the game at the moment. So maybe after he sacrificed something and then he can involve him in the game. But let's find out how we can uh, crush our opponent in few moves. So probably the idea would be uh, queen f4, queen f6 and then we can give checkmate on g7 or h8. Second idea would be uh, to play rook e3 and then rook h3 with idea to uh, sacrifice in some moment because after that we can bring the queen on h file and then that will be also checkmate. So uh, we have powerful bishop and we don't need to trade him for the knight. Now one question about rooks. So here we have uh, opportunity to put the rook on c file and also we have opportunity to put the rook on d file. And one is far away better move than the other. So uh, take a pause if you want, think a little bit what is better here. But uh, now I will tell you. So definitely it's better to put the rook on d file. This is open file for us. For black it's not, but for white, yes. And we can use that for attack on the pawn. Uh, the weakness is on d5. How we know that, that this pawn is a weak pawn? Because there is no friends who can defend him. I mean, there is no pawns who can defend him. There is only the, uh, heavy pieces who can defend him, but then that means that... Uh, uh, heavy pieces will be passive and they need to st they need to stay and to just to protect that pawn uh, and that, that is all so in, in the game could be something like this and after rook d8 we can increase attack so rook d4 first and after maybe queen d6 uh, he wants to also to bring more pieces to defend that we can just play rook from a to d1 and the pawn will fall here in this position 
again we can uh, see where we should go with our rook so for example maybe we should hit in the center and then to open the center and in that way we can uh, put our heavy pieces on on the file but we we need also to take a look what the enemy can do at the same time so when we play d4 uh, then we immediately open some space for the, the enemy knight and now he will be so powerful piece on c4 why he's so powerful not only that he's attacking the queen i mean of course we, we can see that and we can move the queen but then we have a problem with the pawn on a3 so this is not a good idea uh, to give your opponent some chance for counter attack or just for activity so that is why much better move here is f4 we want to open f file and then we will probably double heavy pieces on open file we will see maybe we will involve the knight in the game also or through the d4 square when he capture here and uh, this is good position for white after that so we need to choose wisely good plan for us where to put heavy pieces Okay, uh, let's see now this position. So in this position, uh, there is a one a problem for both sides. They didn't develop uh, the, the queen side at all. So they are playing just on the king side, but this is not good. So you need to develop uh, every single piece what you have on the board and then to st uh, start with attack. Uh, I mean, of course, if you see some opportunity that you can cause damage in black position or the, uh, the enemy position, uh, right away, of course, you, you should use that moment. But uh, when the position is the type of position is closed then probably you should develop your pieces first and then to see where you should go with your pieces so in this case probably we should develop the pieces the black can do the same thing now let's uh, let's compare the bishops and the knights so when it's time for us to have the bishops and when it's time for us to have the knights so uh, when the, the center is completely open when we exchange the pawns in the center then we should we should uh, keep alive our bishops in this case we have uh, immediately some threat here we are we are threatening bishop f6 and after queen f6 we can give checkmate on h7 so uh, bishops are definitely better here because we have open diagonals for them in this position we can see that the center is completely closed and that means that the knights are definitely better to have here and um, of course black can use that for a strong attack on our king and probably this is uh, pretty much a winning position for for black in this position we can see that white already uh, advanced with his pawns uh, on the on the king side and this is uh, really a bad thing because uh, this is middle game and he should uh, keep uh, the pawns in front of his king not to push him uh, like uh, black what he did i mean he didn't push the pawns and this is good thing uh, the king is perfectly safe there okay and one more rule in chess so um, basically we should attack uh, squares what our opponent can't uh, can't um, uh, defend and in this case he has dark square bishop we have light square bishop so naturally we should go and to attack through the light squares now it's even easier because the pawns are on dark squares on the king side so uh, the best move uh, here should be bishop g4 and after that we have tremendous pressure on that knight on f3 he can defend that one time but after knight e, uh, knight d4 the game is practically over we will capture there and we will earn some material also uh, here we can uh, see that uh, black has big problem with light squares so our bishop is so powerful here not dark square bishop light square bishop we are speaking about light square bishop because dark squares uh, black is easily can cover with his pawns but light squares uh, he's already in a bad situation because and no, uh, no one from no one from pawns can go and to cover light squares. So white uh, white can use light squares for attack. For example, the king can go on g8, and probably the best uh, idea for white is just to open h file. If he opens h file, uh, the the game is over because that will be checkmate. Uh, the king can go on on g8. So one of ideas could be that. The second idea could be maybe to double our to connect our bishop and the queen in idea to give checkmate on h7 but i would rather go for h4 and then g5 just to open even more a black king we have also the other bishop who can uh, who can be involved in the game especially after we exchange a little bit more the pawns on the king side and now one imp important thing about uh, castling too early so uh, black already made his decision so he castle on the king side and uh, not only that he castle on the king side he also played h6 two fatal mistakes i mean if you play one fatal mistake maybe you have chance to uh, get rid from that but uh, with two fatal mistakes there is no back i mean this is already winning position for white if you want to take a pause try to see how you can punish black because he castle on the king side uh, okay, I will tell you that immediately with knight d5 you can win the game because now we will capture the knight on f6 and not only that, uh, after that we can capture the pawn on h6. Everything because of that pawn on h6. 
So this is one of ideas how we can win the game. And second, uh, what is more practical, because sometimes you don't have that moment that you can uh, pin uh, pin the, the knight, you can play g4. Even the bishop is maybe on e3 here. Maybe the bishop could be on e3. Still, we can play g4, g5, everything because of the pawn on h6. We will provoke exchange. Uh, we will be fast in our attack. And because of that, we didn't castle. So uh, the, the white has completely winning position. I mean, for someone who understands chess, this is completely winning position. So we will castle on the queen side if we need. But for now, we don't need. We can just play g4, g5. We will open with one rook. Uh, probably we will involve more uh, pieces in the game and that will be enough for us to win the game. And now I want to tell you that how it's important to check the last two moves from your opponent. For example, uh, here, uh, white uh, can play queen e1. Idea is maybe hidden, but uh, let's figure out what white is preparing for that. So, uh, queen e1, and now idea is to play knight h4. Because if uh, if he wants to play knight h4 right away, he can't, because then uh, black can simply capture the pawn on uh, on uh, on e4. So now maybe we can continue with knight f5, but then he can capture on c3, and uh, this is tempo move, and uh, still this is better for, for black. So that is why we should... Uh, we should play first queen e1, and after queen e1, uh, now we are preparing to play knight h4. Maybe a good, uh, good question could be why we shouldn't uh, move the knight from uh, c3 to d2 and uh, to e2 and then to g3 and f5. Uh, because this knight could be so important to jump on d5 in some moments, especially when the knight on f6 is not anymore there. So, uh, basically we are pinning the knight on f6 to stay there. Uh, with knight h4, we will weak uh, even more uh, the king side, and we can expect that black will play in some moment g6. But then g6 will be a uh, weakness for black because then f file is uh, so exposed to attack. So we will play queen, uh, queen, g, uh, queen g3, and after that we can double our heavy pieces on open file, and that would be probably disaster for black. So, knight h4, idea is to bring the knight on f5, and in some moment when he moves the knight from that place, we can play knight e5, but if he doesn't move the, the knight from f6, still we have chance uh, uh, to to attack on the king side, because we have great knight on f5, and constantly we are threatening some checkmate on g7, also we are threatening to capture on h6, and when he capture, then the knight will probably fall on f6, so we need just to double our heavy pieces, and pr practically we are too strong on the king side, so probably black can't hold the position. Okay, now something about endgame. In endgame, our king could be also useful piece like other pieces, but only if there is no queens on the board. So uh, in this case, we don't have queens on the board. So the best thing what we can do is just to bring our king up and he can help us in defending our pawns and also to attack some of enemy pawns. So uh, probably you should activate your king when you enter in endgame. Also, I want to rec recommend to you to watch my previous video and that is how to create a storm because um, this is something about strategy and uh, especially for beginners and this will be so useful for you because um, um, you will see that how it's important to uh, understand chess and um, uh, when you set up everything perfect then you can just uh, release that storm and you will crush your opponent. If you like this video please uh, subscribe and see you in the next. Bye bye.